Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. We're Erin Lori Miller. And this is Plant Free. We've been house sitting now since 2015. We've done a dozen house sits in five different countries internationally. In this video today, we're gonna to share with you our best tips for homeowners when it comes to house sitting, that if you use these tips, you'll have better house sitting experiences more often. Tip number one for homeowners is when interviewing potential house sitters for your home, suggest connecting for a video chat. The reason for doing this is because as humans, we can pick up so much more information on a video call than we can just on like a written email or a text or what have you. As soon as you're able to even digitally see the person face to face, you can pick up information such as body language, voice intonation, speaking patterns, just general appearance even, attitude, that sort of thing. And you'll be able to gather so much more information, whether it be consciously or subconsciously, that it'll be a valuable step in the process for you to evaluate potential house sitters. If there is any resistance to the people that you're going to interview as a potential house sitter to doing a video call, that could be an indicator or maybe a red flag in and of itself. We would encourage you to prepare some questions ahead of this video call. Some things like, how long have they been house sitting? Are they also property owners themselves? How many people are in their party? Do they have children, pets, do they smoke? You wanna prepare the questions that would be the most valuable to you when receiving the answers. Tip number two for homeowners is to clearly communicate your expectations in the house sit. This communication will increase the chances that you'll get what you hope for and expect in the house sit, and it will increase the chances for the house sitter to deliver to you what you want. Once you've communicated your expectations clearly, be ready to negotiate and do tweaks to the arrangement back and forth with the house sitter so that you can both arrive at an agreement that you're happy with. Tip number three that we have for homeowners is to prepare a binder or a guidebook on everything you can think of in how you operate your home. Yeah, this is a big one, not only for you, but again, for the house sitter. So you'll both benefit by making and having this type of book available. Mm -hmm. And updating it frequently when changes occur. Mm -hmm. Examples of things to include in a book like this might be things like your pet feeding schedule, their diet, exercise regimens, etc. Things like your heating and cooling system in your home, how those operate. If you have a home security system or alarm, the operation and codes to that. Uh, things like uh, your recycling schedule, if you have that in the country where you're owning um, garbage schedules, that sort of thing. And manner of disposal of garbage in your country, it varies um, widely across different nations, so you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. Things like contacts for your neighbors or your friends that would normally help out if there's a situation in your home, emergency contacts, etc. The overall idea here is that the more information you make available to the house sitter, the more chance or higher percentage chance that house sitter will be able to run the home successfully in a manner that you would run it yourself and give you a more enjoyable time away from your home, whether it be on vacation or whatever you're enjoying. Another little side tip is Consider chatting with your potential house sitters on frequency of communication with you. Some people really like to know on a daily basis how things are going. Other people might not want to be contacted at all. Maybe they're overseas on a, on a river cruise and just completely relaxing and they don't want to hear from their house sitters at all. So mm -hmm. establish that up front so it's not too much or too little. Yeah, it's a good point. Everyone's different as far as how much uh, communication frequency they prefer. And if that's chatted about up front, Again, you'll just have a better opportunity to have a harmonious arrangement while you're away. Yeah. Tip number four for homeowners is pay or no pay. Utilities or money in any way or shape or form exchanged. You might, would want to think about the task list that your home requires. We've seen everything and we've even personally done everything from just watering two potted plants and putting out trash all the way to managing a farm 15 acres with staff there's a big range in the middle there but the point and tip number four we have for homeowners is consider what you're asking of your home sitter your house sitter and should it be a free exchange 
Should there be a bit of utility coverage? Should there be a rent paid from your house sitter? Should there be a wage paid from you to the house sitter? There's all manner of um, structures that you could uh, come up with and you we our tip is to just discuss that with your house sitter mm -hmm. it's a good tip because from experience we can tell you that if you take the approach of let's see how much i can get out of my house sitter for free you may attract a good house sitter in that arrangement but if you're asking too much or a great deal from them and and without offering pay i can tell you right now you'll see that person one time and you'll never see them again so if you're doing this you know multiple times and your goal is to build up sort of repeat relationships and arrangements if you treat each other fairly there'll be a better chance of going ahead and doing that we've had a few house sits where frankly we have been overworked that we'll never return to We've had other house sits where it's been a very good arrangement for both parties and we've been invited back and we've done their house sit multiple times. So consider that if you're uh, looking at house sitting as a long-term uh, repeatable thing in your life. Your house sitters may not be completely retired with nothing going on. They may have a little endeavor on the side. They may have family and friends that they're kind of managing and trying to take care of also. So just again, we can't stress enough to just keep that communication really open. Mm -hmm. We believe that if you use these tips we've described in this video, you'll have a more enjoyable house sitting experience more often. We encourage you to watch this video next. My name's Air. I'm Lori. And this is Plan Free. If you like the video, click the like button. It's free, just takes a second and it helps a lot. Click the subscribe button if you'd like to support the channel and the blue bell icon if you'd like to know when the next video is coming out. If you want to add tips that we didn't cover here, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. 